Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be going over a package called the Riff Markets to Price and Options. So here are the packages we're going to have to require for this tutorial. I called in some options for Google that are going to expire this Friday, and then I separated them by calls and puts. So we're gonna start off by calculating some Greeks. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to call in the 10 year treasury so I can get the yield for our risk-free rate. So I'll use get symbols dot fred and the ticker is dgs10 i'm going to send that to my global environment so i'll go ahead and run that line i'm going to extract the very last observation of dgs10 i'm going to divide by 100 and then divide by 360 to get the daily rate and you don't need to have this options data like I do here. I just have it so we can later compare our pricing to the actual prices in the market. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start by writing some variables for our parameters. So we'll start with expiration. That's as date. And we're going to choose 2020 731. I'm also going to store our current date in a variable called today. And then days to expiration is as numeric expiration minus today. I'm going to set Google's closing price for the day this variable for July 28th. So I'll use the closing price of 1503.65. For the strike, let's take a look at our options. So I'm gonna use the 1500 call and that's the one we're gonna be pricing in. So I'll jot down 1500. I'll then calculate the risk-free rate by summing the daily yield by the number of days to expiration. So I'll use rep, do DGS10, by the number of days to expiration. I'll then store the expiration as a fraction of years by running year fraction from our quantlib. So the start dates will be today, the end dates will be expiration, Day counters set that equal to one so it'll return the number of years left to expiration and then here I'll store the dividend yield which is zero for Google and then I'm going to calculate the implied volatility by running as numeric American option implied volatility from our quantlib so the type will be call the value We'll take a look at our calls. So I'll use the market value, which is 38.45. And then for the strike, I'll use strike. The underlying price will be STK. Dividend yield, set that equal to div. Risk-free rate, we'll use RF. Maturity, we'll use EXP, and then estimated volatility, we'll set that equal to 50%. All right, so I'm gonna run this block. All right, so now we can calculate the Greeks by running Greeks. We're gonna use the black strolls formula for pricing in a call option. So S is the underlying stock price, K is the strike, B is our volatility, R is our risk-free rate, double T is time to expiration, we use EXP, and then lastly, D is for dividend, so we use DIB. I'll then run complete, set that equal to true. I'll go ahead and run this. 
All right, so now we get our Greeks. They return our inputs. So here it's saying that the option should be priced at 38.18 using this calculator, and the current value in the market is 38.45. Here are our Greeks. All right, so PSI is also known as Epsilon. It's the percentage change in the value of the option in regards to the change in the underlying asset's dividend yield. So if Google were to issue a dividend at say 1%, we can expect this option to lose approximately six or seven cents. And the elasticity, that's the percentage change in price of the option in regards to a 1% change in the price of Google. So I'll go ahead and write those down here so you can reference what they actually mean. All right, the next thing we can do in this package is to calculate simulations given the parameters we use to calculate our option price and our Greeks, and this will give us a sense of what type of price move the options are pricing in. And this week, a day before expiration, Google will release earnings. So that's why our implied volatility is a little high. So we'll see what type of move this call option is actually anticipating. So we'll use SIM price. SO is our current stock price. V is our volatility. R is our risk-free rate. Double T is expiration. T is our dividend yield. I'll do 1,000 different simulations. How many periods? We'll set that equal to the number of days to expiration. We'll set jump equal to false. Long form, we'll set that equal to true. So I'll go ahead and run this function. All right, so I'm gonna extract the endpoints of this simulation. We store it in last day. So I'll use subset S, where S period is equal to the days to expiration. This will give us the endpoints of all the simulations. And I'm gonna use that to calculate an average by running mean last day price. So I'll use the mean to calculate the standard deviation to the upside and downside. So this will be for one standard deviations. I'm gonna copy this, change this to two and change the variable name to two. So this will be to the downside. And then change these to minus. All right, so I'll run this block. All right, now we're gonna use ggplot to plot our simulations. So we'll use ggplot, we'll pass in S, and then AES is our A aesthetics. So here I'll set the X axis equal to period, Y will be price, and then I'll set color equal to trial. Next I'll add the lines by running geo line. I'll add the mean and center deviations. So I'll use geom h line. And I want that on the y axis. So I'll set y intercept. I'll plot the average. Set the color equal to black. I'm going to add another h line. Again, y intercept is equal to std up one. I'll set the color equal to green. And I'll set that as a dashed line. So I'm gonna copy this line to add the rest of them. 
So this will be 2. I'm going to change it down, standard deviations to red. And then I'll add another H line for the strike. Change the color to blue. And then finally, I'll do theme, legend, position. I'm going to type in none. All right, so I'm going to change this to price. So I'll go ahead and run all these lines. Let's take a look at our plot. So these are all of our simulations. So the black line is the average. The blue dash line is the strike price. This is the standard deviation line. This is two standard deviations to the downside. Similarly, we have one standard deviation to the upside and two standard deviations to the upside. And in a normal distribution, 95% of the observations will be within plus or minus two standard deviations. And we do see that some of these simulations actually go over and below the two standard deviation lines. So with only three days left to expiration, we see that the stock can make a huge move to the upside or downside above the 1700 level or below 1400. All right, so I'll close this out. And here I'll paste the calculations in order to get the return to the two standard deviation marks. So if we run these lines, take a look that we can see a move of plus or minus 12 to 13% by Friday expiration. And hopefully it will be between these two percentages. Another cool thing we could do with this package is we could insert many strikes as a parameter and we're going to compare the Greeks of the calls and the puts. So here we'll do comparing Greeks. All right, so for strikes, I'm going to set a sequence of 1400 to 1600 by 5. So it'll be plus or minus 100 points of today's closing price. I'll do C Greeks. I'll calculate the Greeks for all these strikes by running BS call. I'm going to copy my parameters from this function. And I'm going to change strike to strikes. I'll do long format, set to true. And then this will be for our puts. All right, so I'll go ahead and run these lines and then we'll create a plot. By running ggplot, I'm going to rbind c Greeks and p Greeks. I'll do AES. I'll do the strikes for the x axis and the values for the y axis. Then I'll set color equal to function name. So I'll add the lines by running geom line plus I'll add some labels for the x-axis and I'll set that equal to strikes plus and then I'll do facet wrap on the Greeks scales We'll do that in free form. So all this is going to do is going to create different plots based off of the different Greeks. So this should be Greek instead of Greeks. And I'll go ahead and run these lines. All right, so we'll take a look at the plots. And now we get a nice comparison of the Greeks. So the red line will be the calls. The blue will be the puts. And then the x-axis are the strikes, and the y-axis are the actual values. All right, so we'll close this out. So another way we can price options is by using a binomial method. So we're going to go ahead and price these options using the binomial method. 
So I'm going to run binome option. Again, I'm going to copy my parameters. Change this back to strike again. And I'm also going to add number of steps. I'll set that equal to days to expiration. Put option will be false since this is a call. American will set that equal to true and then return trees. We'll set that equal to true. All right, so I'm going to run these lines. Let's take a look at X. So by using the binomial method, we get a price of 41.25 and our market value was 38.45, I believe. We get the Greeks. These are our parameters. And then we get some binomial trees. So these will be our option prices for the trees. This will be our stock price for each of the nodes. The probabilities to get there. Will the option be exercised? We only got two cases of true. And then delta tree and bond tree, I believe, are used to create the plot. So if we plot this, these numbers will make much more sense. So let's go ahead and do that by running binome plot. So I'm going to copy all of these parameters. I'll go ahead and run this. So if we take a look at our plot, so each of these points are the nodes. It can either go up for the rest of the three days or down for the rest of the three days. Each of these represents a step or the number of days until expiration. So this will be the first day, second day, and then this will be expiration date. And you see quite the range that we can expect using this model. So only two cases return where the option will be exercised. So at this very, very top node, the option price was approximately 170. At a stock price of 1670 and of course if it falls all the way down here to a stock price of 1353 our option will be worth zero so you can reference these nodes to these tables here and if we take a look at the probability tree so in our best case scenario if the stock price goes all the way up here that probability of reaching that by expiration is close to 12 percent and you see that 60 percent or more is between these two nodes and our worst case scenario has a probability of 13 percent so the bigger the circle means the greater probability of getting there we can also add values so if we copy this I can add plot values, set that equal to true, and I'll go ahead and add arrows as well. So if we run this, let's take a look at our plot. Now it looks a little bit better. This package also has methods to calculate different types of options, such as Asian options, binary options, and other types of options. But this was it for this tutorial. Let me know what you guys think, and in the next video I'll try and calculate some Greeks for different types of option spreads that we can do. So stay tuned, and I'll see you guys in the next video.